Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Toast and Happy Monday. Hope everybody's having a great day thus far. Hope everybody enjoyed their weekend. Hey, Jax, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm looking forward to the toast today. Um, a little, you know, Monday buoying is in store. Yes. So we had a very nice weekend because I had my book signing in New Jersey yes. on Saturday. And as much as in my head, I was just like, this is not going to be the vibe. It was the nicest place on earth. First of all, the bookstore that the signing was at, Books and Greetings, was an oasis. If you live yeah. anywhere near that place, go there every day. Like, I would live there. No, it was huge. They had so many offerings besides books. They had snacks. They sold candles and journals and things for kids. It was so cute. It was so cute. They sold like blankets. It was such a vibe. I can't even begin to describe to you. And then the people who showed up were just the best of their elk, really. They were the elk of dreamers. They were the elk of amazing people. Yeah, it was a fabulous um, event. I was there too. So many people brought their kids. Their kids were so cute. Everybody loved the book. It was, ex I agree. Like we were thinking like, could this event have come at a worse time? Like we just had the worst week. We were so, I was literally like not okay last week. Like so emotional, so nuts. Like I was not okay. I didn't even realize until like I had the weekend off. It didn't like hit me how not okay I was until I took time off to just like think and relax. And it turned out to be just exactly what we needed. It really, really was. It was so booing. It was so hopeful and positive. And thank you to every single person who came. I enjoyed meeting every single one of you. And your campers were the cutest camp. Like those campers were booing me. Yeah. And to everyone who has bought the book so far, who's tagging me in all their stories like that. It's it's just so crazy. The highs and lows of this week, because that has yeah. been such a high for me. But it's also just made me so emotional. So just thank you to everyone. The book will be restocked this week. I will share the link as soon as it hits, you know, the Shelves. stores. Um, so if you didn't get your copy yet, feel just wait till um, this week. Oh, I'm like firing in all cylinders with my with your noise, with my noises. But if you want like a true signed copy, I signed a lot of extras for books and greetings. So call them up and order a copy because that one is, you know, like not a book plate book signed. And they can ship too. They can ship. And that's the only place right now that has books in stock. Fabulous. Well, it really was great. That was a booing event. I also went to, um, on Saturday, I wasn't going to go, but then I was like, you know what, I have to. I went to an engagement party for my friends who are actually supposed to be getting married in Israel next year. Um, and that's just like so Jewish. Like you you still go and you still celebrate Simchas. No, you have and, to. It's like, it's mandated, really. And I was so, I had the best time. And it was just so good to be around like my people. So they were like, I, I feel so much better today. Um, I feel like equipped to do the show. I definitely needed the weekend and I'm glad that I took it. And yeah, I feel better. I definitely feel different. Okay, good. I'm glad. And I also feel like this tug of war, but also a strong resolve. Like every time I go through the tug, I end up on the same side of like, we have to move forward. Obviously, like we're going to, this is always going to be top of mind for us, but like we have to keep working. We have to keep doing our show. We yeah. have to keep putting smiles on people's faces. And like even the things that we did, like cared about so much like, two weeks ago that we don't really care about, like we have to find ways to engage with them again. Like it, this can't sink us as like no. people, as a show. Like we, 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 Hamas can't take the toast. No, for sure. And that's like the general feeling that I'm feeling. Like I, the things that I cared about that like last week you couldn't find me, like I, I'm coming back to myself. Like I am caring. Like, and honestly, like the joy and like the serotonin and the things that I felt over the weekend when I saw pictures of Taylor and Travis, like was real. Like, okay, that's I, our first story. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try and get back to that place. Yeah, no, I, I feel like last week it felt like I, I could I would never get there. Like I like nothing was important. And I think a lot now that I've like had time to reflect, I think a lot of what I was feeling for other people was like almost a resentment. Like it felt for me like my whole world was ending. Like nothing would ever be the same. And then seeing people just kind of appearing to be doing things like that they had planned, I was like, I was jealous, honestly, like resentful almost because for me, like nothing could go on, you know? Yeah, no, that's how I feel. I feel jealous of people who don't seem to be affected by this. Like I feel jealous that they're, you know, at the pumpkin patch, just resuming normal life. Right. And so I think like I was lashing out, like for real, like I was jealous. Do you mean of Taylor and her premiere? Of Taylor and just like my whole, um, 
like energy, like being angry at everyone, you know? I, I, I think it was like a, a genuine resentment. Yeah. So you don't feel that way today? I'm 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 definitely feeling better. Like I I'm feeling better. Okay. I don't know if I can pinpoint like exactly how I feel about everything, but right now I'm like acknowledging my resentment. Okay. That's fair. You know, it's gonna come in waves. So Like I didn't even I didn't get to see the Eras movie. Like I I had all these plans, remember? Right. And I ended up just giving all my tickets away. Yeah. Well, it'll be there waiting for you whenever I know. you're and, ready. And I really, I want to enjoy it. Like, and I want to be in a really good place to enjoy it. And so I don't know when that is, but like, I will be seeing it, of course. Okay, good, good. Yeah, because, you know, and that's the thing, like, with Taylor specifically, like, Taylor has brought me so much joy over the years. And like, I don't want that to dissipate. Like, then who, then we're all losers. Yeah, I think you do need to like, hold on to those things and try and still care if you can yeah. and it seems like you can you're getting to a place I can, where you can I can I really needed this weekend and I feel like this is going to be a really good week and I, and I want to have hope well you have a and, great week why don't you tell everyone about your week well I well today's episode by the way is audio only because Churdy is booked and busy it's literally the crack of dawn I'm in full glam I'm headed to two events and then to the airport so I will get to LA later today and then starts my big week, you know. I've got Jackie Schimmel on the toast. I've got Heather McDonald on the toast. I'm doing a bunch of things in LA, you know, meetings, 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 podcast, podcast, podcast. So it's going to be a very – when I'm, I don't go to LA a lot. So when I do, I try and do everything like a normal person would do every time they go to LA. But I do it like once or twice a year. And so that's what this week is. Like I know I'm going to be dead when I get home. But um, it'll be good. I'm really excited. It'll be productive. I think it'll be good for me to like get out of the house. And then when I get back, I literally move. Like things are – I, I – I was literally thinking with Ben last night. I'm like, we haven't even thought or talked about moving because we've been so, you know, focused on other more important things. But that's something I'm really excited about. And that's buoying me. Like, that's something I've wanted for so long. Like, and I'm really excited. I'm excited for the change for you and the new energy. New energy. And I was saying to Ben, the thought of ever leaving my current apartment and my building and the people who work here and my neighbors, like, for so long, it was, it made me, like, so sad. I think it actually hindered me from ever moving out the previous times that I've tried that we all know about. Mm -hmm. And now I feel so excited about my new place that like a lot of that sadness isn't there. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm being positive. Like I'm really trying to look forward. Okay. That's, I love that. Thank you. Um, we actually have some really good stories today, so I'm excited to get into it. Obviously the big news of the weekend was Taylor and Travis's NYC jaunts they were everywhere um so we will be giving our thoughts beyond Mm -hmm. that did you consume any content I I've been watching Beckham loving it loving it very interesting stuff and it's so even more interesting because I don't know how the games are going to end like are they going to win the trifecta of the European Cup I don't know right is he going to go to Real Madrid like this time I don't know so it's um it's like very suspenseful for me Yeah, like having no knowledge or context makes it even more exciting. Yeah, and I feel like they do a good job of, you know, not spoiling it. Like the viewer, they made it for a viewer who might not know what happened. I felt the exact same way. I'm so glad you're watching and enjoying something that I recommended because I'm watching something and enjoying that you recommended, which is At Home with the Furies. Like on, I forget, maybe Friday, I was like, I absolutely have to get off my phone. I'm averaging like 13 hours of screen time. It's really not healthy. I need mindless. And so I started watching the Furies and I totally get it. Like what an interesting group of people. What an, what an interesting. interesting life. Yeah, well, like, we were in the car on the way home from the book signing and we were talking oh, yeah. about, oh, because Tommy fought on Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. That's why we were talking about it, me, you, and Ben. That's why we were talking about the Furies, and Ben was talking about how he loves Tyson Fury and this video of him sw- singing um, American Pie. And we didn't know he, what he was talking about. And he like kept trying to pull up the video, and like nobody wants to watch a video in the car. Like stop. No, and like Ben was driving, and it's like stop. Like every time he hit a red light, he's like, let me get this thing. And it was just honestly, I started to hate the video before I even saw it, and me I was like, too. this is gonna make me, this is gonna make me hate Tyson Fury because mm-hmm. Ben is being stupid. Me too. But then he got the video up, and we watched it, and it was iconic. And honestly, you recommended, but that video like pushed me over the edge. I'm like, oh my God, these people are insane. I absolutely need to watch this. Yeah. So you started it. What do you think? I think it's a really good show. I do sense like a a, a pattern and the show feels like a little repetitive. That's what I said. Because it's like, he's retired. 
oh, he hates it. Like, it's just, she she puts up with a lot. Like, it's the formula. Every episode's, like, kind of similar. But when you're looking for that sort of mindlessness, it's nice to know what's to come. It's comforting. Yeah. And by the way, spoiler alert, he's out of retirement. Like, uh, you told me that. So I figured that was coming. Um, but just a very interesting way of life. And I'm learning a lot, a lot about the traveler life. I had assumed like travelers and Roman gypsies, I thought that was a religion, but it's not because they also said that they were doing a christening like they're Christian. So it's more like a way of life. Yeah, I don't understand it completely. I wish they would explain it more. Like that, it feels like they expect you to have a basic understanding of what it Mm -hmm. means. I didn't even know the term traveler was what you call gypsy. So yeah. I could use a little bit more of an education, but I was enjoying it too. Maybe I'll go back to that. It was, it was hilarious. Like, it's crazy. And like, where do they live? Honestly, I had to Google. I'm like, Montecombe or whatever they live. I'm like, is, and I really can't distinguish their accents from, like, I'm not good with accents. So I'm like, this sounds kind of Britain-ish, but like, it also sounds like Scottish. And where is it? I believe it's outside of Manchester. Yeah. It's like Britain-ish. Yeah. Because she went to London for the day. To do that talk show, which I loved. Right. Queen. Working Queen. mama of like seven. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you know who she reminds me of? Does, has anyone else made this call? Who? Brittany Mahomes. Oh, yeah. They have like similar lo- lives. Lives. I, I can never say the word multiple life. Lives. At least you're not messing up woman, women. Yeah. They have very similar, you know, structures of their day. And they kind of look alike. I feel that. Oh, good. Okay. It's also crazy how young Tyson and Paris are c- compared to how many kids they have and like how much life they've lived. Yeah. They're like 35. And, no, they and have- then of course, like the Tommy and Molly elements are, you obsessed? are just fabulous. Yeah. I just finished Molly's book. It was really cute. It was a weird book to be reading, you know, in the middle of a war. But it was mm-hmm. but it was a light fare, which I guess was good. My only gripe with it, which isn't a gripe with the actual book, is that she wrote it before she was a mama. And I love her so right. much because of, like, how she shares motherhood. Mm-hmm. So it was missing a huge chunk of Molly for me. Yeah, I feel that. But there was some, like, there was some good tidbits about Love Island and such. And it was cute. No, they're interesting. So I watched that. I watched a lot of The Nanny, a lot of Young Sheldon, like things that just bring me, you know, solace and comfort and peace. And it was a good restorative weekend. And I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Come and find me. Should we get into the stories then? Like, like are, you, are you that ready? I mean, I do have like a busy day. So yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So without further ado, do, 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 here are the fast five stories that you need to know. And today's episode of The Toast is brought to you by Saks.com. We are always doing our best when it comes to looking fabulous on the podcast. Sometimes our pajama uniforms and sweatshirts do need a little bit of an upgrade. And that's why we love shopping at Saks.com for everything from podcast looks to GNO fits and more. Lest we not forget, this is my year of yes. And that means, you know, events, trips, and that requires clothing. And it is so hard for me these days. I just did a whole vlog yesterday about this. It is really hard for me to find clothing. And Saks.com is one of my favorites. You know, as a New Yorker, we know it's an institution and I love their website. It's super fun and easy to shop on. So whether you're going for a cozy vibe, a more elevated look, they've got it all at Saks.com. Because don't get don't get it twisted. Once I move into my new apartment, like my cozy vibes are going to be on fleek. You, you guys are not going to recognize me. And that's because I'm shopping at Saks.com. And what I love about Saks.com is they have really specific filters. So whether you're like a wedding guest, you're going on vacation, you need something for business, they make it really easy to shop and they get a little crazy. You know, you can even shop by your star sign or of course by your situation for like a vacation or something. So you can find the perfect revenge dress from brands like Christopher Esber and Cult Gaia. That's also why I love Saks.com. I feel like the buyers there are all like really chic. So they find cool new brands and then you're wearing them before everyone else. And they're like, how did you know about that? And you say, well, well, I shop at Saks.com. So discover new ways to shop for everything every day at Saks.com. That's S-A-K-S dot com. And discover new ways to shop for everything every day at Saks.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nutrafol. Did you know that hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women, one of them being your girl? In this case, two in two women because Jackie's postpartum energy, me with my, you know, huge change in diet. If you're among them, know that you're not alone. Thinning is totally normal, and Nutrafol helps women address it from within with science-backed supplements. So if you've ever wished for visibly thicker hair or less shedding, or maybe you're just stressing you out and your hair is 
not doing what it needs to be doing. Check out Nutrafol, the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. From postpartum to menopause to plant-based lifestyles, and no matter your life stage, Nutrafol has four unique formulas to support women. Each is physician formulated using drug-free, science-backed ingredients, so you get the most reliable results every time. Go to Nutrafol.com to take their hair health wellness quiz. Identify the causes of your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you personalized plans for better hair growth through their whole body approach. I like taking the quiz because I really at the time didn't know that like a a significant weight loss or a significant change in diet could have any sort of repercussions on my hair. I was like shook. Um, So Nutrafol is just supporting healthy hair growth from within by targeting the root causes of thinning, which can be hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, metabolism. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off their first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code THETOAST. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code THETOAST. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code THETOAST. Today's episode is also brought to you by Thrive Market, our go-to for all of our grocery and household essentials and the convenience of getting everything online and then quickly ship to our doorstep is a huge time saver, especially for the mama here. Mama, I know Thrive Market saves your life. It does, because not only do I not have to lug groceries from the grocery store, they have everything I need and the healthier versions of it. It really couldn't be better. I get all of my cooking essentials from there. I get snacks for the whole family, and I just load up. They also have a freezer section, so you can load up a freezer box, frozen pizzas, mac and cheese. Like Mm. They have everything. And as a Thrive Market member, we're saving money on every single grocery order. On average, we're saving 30% each time. On top of all the savings, they also have a deals page. It changes daily, and it gives you cash back on so many brands. And they have a price match guarantee. So not only does Thrive Market save us money, they also save us time because instead of reaching, reading a bunch of label ingredients at the grocery store, we can use their on-site filters to suit our needs. So whether you're looking for suitified gluten-free snacks, low-sugar alternatives, non-toxic cleaning, you can curate your own shopping experience with the click of a button and trust that it's made with the highest quality ingredients and sourcing methods. Plus, the best part is when you join Thrive Market, you're also helping a family in need with the one-for-one membership matching program. So you join and they give. Join in on the savings with Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift when you go to thrivemarket.com slash the toast for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash the toast, thrivemarket.com slash the toast. Okay, let's get into the stories. Our first story is the big news of the weekend. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey get touchy-feely during a second date night in a row. During their whirlwind New York weekend, they were spotted out for dinner on Saturday night. They both made cameos on SNL. Sunday night, they went to dinner again after Travis was seen leaving her apartment to go to the Eagles game versus the Jets to watch his brother play the Jets. So this was like the first time we like really got pictures of them together, you know? Yes, intentional. And it was crazy because we got pictures and videos and the way that people have broken down every millisecond of this video is insane, but it is that interesting. Like it really is. It was a long walk. It was a long walk. There was a lot of action. The door, the guards, the paparazzi. Like there was a lot to unpack. And so many people are comparing it to like a smut novel. And I cannot, it's it's literally a smut novel. Let me tell you why. Please tell me why. Okay. In these smut novels, like, it's I, it's really, like, all about the female gaze and, like, so many little things that, like, mean more. And so, like, Taylor's doors are always opened by her security guard. And, like, Travis wouldn't let that. And, like, that's so smut where, like, one guy who's obsessed with a girl, like, get out of my way. Like, it's literally smut. And then just, like, small things, like, people were obsessed with, like, she got out of the car. He had opened the door for her. She got out of the car. And while he's, like, waiting for her to walk, he closes the door, but he doesn't want to let go of her, so he puts his hand on her stomach. And, like, hand on the stomach, like, that's not usual. Like, usually it's, like, hand on, you know, the small of your back. But it being on the stomach is, like, so intimate, and it's so smut. It's, like, a small thing in a smut novel that's really written from the female gaze because it's, like, so protective. Mm -hmm. And Travis is, like, this enormous guy. He's, like, a footballer. Like, his job is to protect and defend. And... It literally, like, you can't write stuff like this. And I saw Tessa Bailey, who's one of my favorite smut writers, like, on Instagram, like, making a video, like, the smutification of Taylor and Travis. And what's so crazy is, like, we've never seen Taylor like this. Like, she's always with freaks. Like, tiny little men who literally couldn't protect her from shit. And there's this photo that, like, has made the rounds of the universe. Like, the one time, it's, like, a blurry, it's not paparazzi, it's definitely, like, an iPhone photo of Taylor and Joe Alwyn, like, out to dinner. And they're sitting at a table that's, like, one side of the table is a booth and the other side is the chair. 
And like the girl always gets the booth, right? Like that's just. That's how it should be. My husband and I have this conversation all the time. Taylor's literally sitting on the chair and like she's taller than him. And it's just like it's indicative of like the two different types of relationships she's had and how this one is so different. Like she's with someone who she can wear heels with, you know? For sure. We'll talk about the heels. But I just want to say about the chair thing. Celebrities do like to like not face yes. out and just face in because it just draws less attention. So that's fair, just like fair. her cross to bear as the more famous one. Fair, but fair, that's fair, the fair, thing fair. with her and Travis. It's like she can have the booth because regardless, they're both big stars. There's yeah. no stopping people from looking at them. Yeah. So just the dichotomy of like everything we've seen in her previous relationships compared to this, like it's smut in the making. It is. Plus she gets to wear her heels, which everyone was freaking out about because he's still so much taller than her. No, and it's a dream. Did you see the pictures of Hibbs yes. close up of his mustache? When they they So they were walking into the SNL after party, which is where the stomach grabbing happened. Then hours later, they left the SNL after party. And what are you going to say? Was that where this... I thought the stomach grab happened like going into Nobu. So I had seen them go to Nobu. And then I also saw them walk somewhere else that looked to be a behind Nobu. I think that might have been where the after party was. Like I was confused. The after party was at Catch, I believe. I believe. That's not even remotely close to Nobu. Yeah. That's what I think I saw. Okay, interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever. Sorry, so, not to trip you up. I know that's a no, 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 no. You're fine. Honestly, the 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 geographic locations of the evening did confuse me because I well, recognized also, immediately. It would be dinner at Nobu. Go to SNL at Thirty Rock. Head downtown to catch. Oh, dinner was before. I forgot SNL's I, very late. I think dinner yes. was before. Yes, oh, that makes complete sense. SNL is uptown. Nobu 57 is uptown. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Okay, cool, cool. Glad that we can map it out. And where did they go to dinner last night? Waverly Inn, which is Taylor's one of fa- fa- Taylor's favorite spots. Got it. So after the SNL after party, they're leaving. And if you zoom in on the photos, Taylor's upper lip, you know, she always loves a sharp red lip. It's a little smudged. And, you know, that could happen if you get a little sweaty, you eat something and drink something. But it's notable that uh, Travis's upper lip has a a stain of red on it. So these two were clearly making out. He also appeared to have, like, a little foundation on his upper lip, which is my favorite thing. Like, remember when Kylie was spotted leaving the movie theaters with Jaden Smith and he literally had foundation all over his face because she had, like, caked it on and they were making out so hard because they were literally 14? Yeah. Even um, in these pictures of her entering or leaving Waverly in, her nose is... um Red. Red, like the the foundation came off her nose. That's classic yeah. makeout stuff. Jackie, it's classic smut. Like they can't keep their hands off each other in public, so they run to the car. Like it's smut. And I'm li- like, it's really, it's actually amazing to see someone like living out a fantasy. And I have to imagine it's even better in real life, honestly. Yeah. Just She's being- obsessed with him. She's obsessed with him. And I think he's obsessed with her and the idea of her. For sure. I literally saw a tweet that was so funny. It's like, Travis Kelsey had a friendship bracelet and a dream. <laughs> he has the elk of a dreamer. Okay. Tra- yes. More so than the people of California. No, they are the elk of dreamers. They're not. But, I mean, it's easy to dream when you look like him and, like, you really could get any girl in the world. Like, any girl who heard Travis Kelsey's interested in you, like, who wouldn't give it a shot? No, and when it first happened, I was like, this is amazing. Like, gonna love this fling. But, like, I could see these two getting married now. Like, I'm I'm fully, like, obsessed. I still, I'm not there yet. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, like, very into them as a couple. But I do still feel like it's a, a fun for right now sort of thing. But these mm-hmm. pictures have moved the needle in terms of convincing me of their veracity, I will say. And then there were the pictures last night that were, like, less exciting because we've already, it wasn't the first time. Um, and there wasn't, like, you know, a belly-touching moment. However, they were exciting nonetheless. And something I'm really noticing is, like, Taylor's style. She's, like, a, she used to, like, never dress sexy. Like, not even close. And she's kind of, like, being, like, a little sexy now. Like, with a corset. Like, what she wore on SNL. Very tight corset with, like, the revealing sides. Yeah. And she wore she's, a corset to the game that she went to. She's embracing, like, you know, a, a sexier look. And I'm definitely here for it. Well, then maybe her next, like, album and era will be a sexy era. We haven't had that yet. Well, no, Vigilante shit was, like, was a was a bridge to some it's sort of sexiness. just one song. Like, Midnight, yeah. the vibe wasn't sexy. It was, like, sparkly. Groovy. Sparkly. I, th- I, I Honestly, when I think, of, I think of groovy as, like, the Midnight's vibe. I think of, like, a dress you would wear for New Year's Eve. Interesting. I don't think that. I think of like, like yeah, kind of be- what she was wearing in like Antihero, like 
very 70s. Like Fleetwood Mac Daisy Jones. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, that is correct. I Maybe just because the name Midnight, I think of like a sparkly blue dress. Yeah, I do stand by that I did not like the Luke to the uh, era's premiere. I was speaking in anger and jealousy, but I, I did not like that. It wasn't no. my favorite. No, I, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was just like a lot between SNL did a skit about like the NFL not being okay, which was very on point. Like it was, it was well, well researched and it was a crazy weekend. Like it, it really was. And it, honestly, I feel in part, it brought me back to life for real. I'm so glad. Yeah, it's important to have hobbies. It is. It is. For me, it, it's like I'm, I'm, I want to be back there. So I'm going to force myself to re-engage. Get there. Um, but it's not the thing. But it was, but, Understood. But it was never the thing for me. It's more of a yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Our next story is kind of a really big story because it's the story that's been evading everyone. Last Friday... We had a fourth story that I forgot to share. We realized after you guys. And it was the story that I was talking about at the top of the show. It was about like some content news that was going to buoy me. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to talk about it. And I got a lot. A lot of people like saw the note on the show. It was like four. We forgot to share. So now we're going to share it because I want to talk about it. Lessons in Chemistry author talks changes from book to series. She said, I'm not going to compare. So Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, which was a Redhead's book last year. It was one of our top books of the year, and it is now an Apple TV Plus show, and it was an amazing book. The author, Bonnie Garmus, said that she's happy to let go a little bit when it came to adapting her book for TV. She spoke with people for this week's issue amid the release of the show. Um, She said... I thought, oh my gosh, what if they changed X, Y, and Z? They did change X, Y, and Z. And you know what? I'm still living and breathing. It's fine. She said, as a writer, you want everything to be as you saw it, but you know going in that it can't be that way. So it's just smart to say, no, let them go because you can't demand that they stick with your vision. Among some of the changes that are um, in the episode, there's a pageant series storyline in the first episode. I guess like Elizabeth in the show like grows up doing pageants. I guess that it could, could explain like her later... No, that literally makes no fucking sense. I know, but they, you know, Hollywood. She's also, like this very quirky, nerdy, like she would never. No, but like maybe she was forced into pageants. That's why she is so like uh, upright and rigid and like. No, I literally think that's like a bad call. I think I thought it was like abundantly clear why she was the way that she was. She was very academic, very smart. I think she probably had like Asperger's. Yeah. Right, like some sort of social anxiety where she would like say things that most people would never say. Yeah, yeah. And not in a mean way, just in an observant way. Right, right. That's like um, Abed from Community. Which it's is- also like Sheldon. Yes, yes. Right, and Sheldon didn't grow up doing pageants. Like, <laughs> Right. I mean, we'll see how they work it in, but also the way 630 is portrayed. 630 is the dog from the book. The He's dog. the breakout star. So Bonnie said 630 is quite different, noting that the dog was going to be a mountain to climb as he's a hard character to get down. He is because, like, we're not going to have a talking dog. But No, yeah. Book- so in the when it's written, like, the dog, like, getting to hear the dog's thoughts is interesting. In a movie, it's incredibly stupid. Right. So 630, like, can't be as much of a main character. Maybe he'll cuddle, cuddle up to Mad, you know, yeah. and do cute dog things. But, like, we can't know, like, how many words 630 knows. Well, honestly, it sounds like the author has, like, a good grip on this situation. I feel like when you're really close to it, I feel like we've heard a lot of stories where, like, the authors are mad. It's like, when you sell the rights, you sell the rights. And you have to, like, just move on from it. Yeah. Even she- though for a lot of people, it's, like, really personal. She has a healthy outlook. The first two episodes are out and then they're dropping every Friday. I'm definitely going to watch. I might just like wait to bank some more episodes. Well, you know that they like split up episodes and put like two minutes on TikTok. And if you scroll long enough, you can watch the whole episode. Oh. I've seen a lot because I just I was curious. And then once I engage with the video, they send me part two, part three, part four. And it looks exactly how I had pictured it in my head. Brie Larson plays the main character and I can't decide because I I didn't love the book and mostly it was because I fucking hated the main character. She was so like, just follow the rules, follow the rules. Um, So Brie Larson was bothering me and I felt like she wasn't doing a good job, but I don't know if that's just from my general dislike of the main character. I understand. Like for me, the main character ruined the book. I liked Elizabeth. She wasn't my favorite, but she was a good main character and then I love 630. Love 630. Ugh, oh, the cutest. I'm really excited to watch. And 
I was excited to let you know what got Bonnie Garmus thought about um, her book being made into a feature show. I'm glad we got to like close the cycle on that. Yeah, and I know people were like waiting with bated breath. What was the fourth story? That yeah. was the fourth story. I'm actually going to move some things around because I have a great segue. Another book to TV news story. This one's making waves because the Hunger Games director said that he totally regrets splitting Mockingjay into two films. Thank you, sir. Wow, it's so crazy because I've seen all the Hunger Games. I didn't know this was like a, a thing within the community. It's kind of like Breaking Dawn uh, part one But I have two. no problem with that. Yeah, because like we just wanted more content. Right. And they did a really good job of like making them two completely different movies. Like I couldn't even, I would say Breaking Dawn part one is better only because we got Bella and Edward's wedding and like that's all we were waiting for. But they were both, that twist at the end of part two, like... Those are two equally amazing movies. The only issue with them is like one of them is called Breaking Dawn Part One. Like they needed two different names. I lo- I completely. But there are only five books. That's I know. The thing. But they could have like plucked something like um, what was Part One about? It was about like the wedding. Like it could have been something about like and the pregnancy. Yeah, something about their love. Take a quote from an earlier book. You know. Yeah, actually, the names don't bother me. Like for real. Um, and I forgot that Twilight did it and Hunger Games did it at like the exact same time. It must have been like trendy to like split your movie in half. What do you think is bigger? Twilight or like or Hunger Games? For me, it's like so obviously Twilight, but that's because I'm obsessed with Twilight and not Hunger Games. I agree with you that it's that way for me too. But I do think when you get down to brass tacks, Twilight is bigger. So are you saying it's more personal than comedy? Yeah. And I don't know how you would measure it. Like we could go by like box office or book sold. Book sales. But also it's like, I feel like, and this could just be like my personal bias. I feel like people are always rewatching Twilight. And I, yes. I sometimes will watch Hunger Games if it's on, but like it doesn't, I don't feel like I need to rewatch it all the time. I feel like Hunger Games is something you watch for the plot. I got it. Thank you. Moving on Twilight. Like I watch for the content. Yeah. I've seen Hunger Games once. <laughs> I have seen Twilight no short of 50 times. Yeah, and I've seen every Hunger Games probably. I mean, I'm sure I did because I've seen like all the last one. But I only really have ever rewatched like one or f- the final one, you know? Like, yeah. What happens I think in I the li- middle one? I w- no, what happens at the end? Does she end up with Peta or Gabe? She ends up with the little one. What? Yeah, it's really shocking. That's wrong. That's wrong. Because Liam Hemsworth like goes. What's his name? Gabe? Gail. <laughs> Gail, Gail, Gail. Yeah. <laughs> Liam Hemsworth is Gail and he kind of like gets a little um, nutty. Nutty and like he goes to work for the Capitol. So basically like they do the revolution and when they take over, it's like they're not as bad as Snow, but they're they're not great either. They like did kill like, I think, remember that stampede into the. No, no, I remember nothing except I volunteer as tribute. Like Liam got a little power hungry. And you know what else I remember? It's so funny, like, what weird things stick with you. Like, that cream they were given in the forest that, like, if you had a gash on your leg, the cream healed it right up. Oh, I don't remember that. I just remember how you it don't? ended. It's, like, it's Jackie, it came down. It was, like, this little, like, looked like a la mer, like a little tub of cream. And it came no, down I believe, on a little, I believe you. a little parachute. It was just so cute. Yeah, no, that's so cute. It didn't, like, burn into my Stay with you. memory, like, for oh, you. Oh, of course, I also remember... Do, 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 do. Of course. I, you remember President Snow and his I bloody remember Rue. cough. I loved Rue. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, she ends up in the countryside with the little one. Having, um, like, like, saved the, fe- the realm. But but still, there's problems, I think. That was the vibe it, I got. It feels like a plot hole. Like, she ended up with the little one. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't sound right because like in the, I remember being in the theaters for the first movie or maybe even the second movie because I think in the first movie she never kissed Gail. And then I don't know what I think maybe in the second movie is when she kissed Gail and like people were like hooting and hollering like thank God yay finally like when you wait for like the two like the obvious pair to go. Yeah no like Peta was just a foil to Katniss and Gail's relationship you know he was always you just know, meant Peta, to be like. Jackie Peta was Jacob. Yeah yeah but she ended up with him. Wrong. Yeah, we were talking a lot about this when we did our fourth wing episode for the Redheads because, like, you know, she has her mans. And I'm just like, is he the Jacob or is he the Edward? Right, is it's hard Gale to know before the, the sequel. Yeah. But even, I remember when we when we were watching Twilight, and maybe it's because the books had already come out, but, like, we knew Edward was Endgame. It wasn't even a question. No, we just knew because, like, we had eyes. 
on the situation. And I thought I had eyes on the situation in Hunger Games, but I guess I didn't. No. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got it right. I think you're right, too, because I remember, like, that's why I was disappointed and didn't, like, keep watching it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, these people have lost me. Liam Hemsworth doesn't win. I'm out. Yeah. Okay, let me read the story because the director said that he now understands the mixed reactions to the final book being divided into two films. During an interview with People Magazine, People Magazine is just getting all the interviews. Published on Friday, the filmmaker admitted that if he had to redo the films, he wouldn't split Mockingjay into two parts. He said, I totally regret it. I totally do. I'm not sure everybody does, but I definitely do. He also noted that the team agreed at the time that the two halves of Mockingjay, which were released in theaters a year apart, had their own Mm. separate dramatic questions, which made for complete arcs. But he also acknowledged why some fans weren't too happy with the long-awaited period between films. Yeah, that's wrong to do. And it just seems like money hungry, honestly. It does, it does. But for like a, a fandom that's obsessed, it prolongs the fun and it's more content. Like if they're both decently good movies, who cares? Yeah, but if they're not, because I don't even remember, like I know Breaking Dawn Part 1 was like the pregnancy, Breaking Dawn Part 2 was like that revolution. I don't know what the difference between Mockingjay Part 1 and 2 is. Like, I feel like it was the same storyline, but just like on a cliffhanger. Oh. Well, that's wrong. Because honestly, like the way they ended Part 1, like there was so much substance in Part 1. I don't know how they could have made Breaking Dawn one movie. Yeah. No, I agree. It would have been silly. Like so much happens in one movie. Like who is the time? Yeah. Also, remember with like Philip Seymour Hoffman, he passed away. Yes. Before... Part two was done. Yeah. They 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 handled that nicely, but they did. That was really sad. Yeah, it was. He was the best. Yeah. So that's what's going on in the world of Hunger Games regrets. Mm. Are you ready for our next story? No. You're not? Because our next story is brought to you by The Farmer's Dog. The Streis brother in your life is the most important thing in your life. It's as simple simple and as complicated as that. And you want to make sure that they are eating the best possible foods and the healthiest foods for them. And that is why I switched to The Farmer's Dog from Kibble. Um, When a senior dog or any dog really at any age, but especially a senior dog starts acting like a puppy again and the pickiest eaters can't wait for dinner time, you might think a spell was cast, but The Farmer's Dog doesn't use any sorcery, just fresh food and science. So the farmer's dog makes and delivers healthy dog food. It's developed by vets, it's nutritionally balanced, and it's made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety conditions. It's the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real healthy food. Traditional dry and wet food are options are options that are highly processed, they can use much lower quality ingredients than they cling to, and they are extremely difficult to portion accurately. But the farmer's dog is fresh, but it's not just fresh and high quality. They also send the food pre pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full healthy life. Dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer than overweight dogs. There's also a ton of benefits. Like for me, Theo's breath was really bad and his poops were really inconsistent. And after, after we switched, he's really on his like thin trim game with good breath and normal size poops. So get 50% off your first box of fresh healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash toast. Plus you'll get free shipping when you go to thefarmersdog.com slash toast. That's thefarmersdog.com slash toast to get 50% off your first box and free shipping. Today's episode is also brought to you by Babbel. This fall, start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel, you ask? Oh, Porque it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, and rooted in real-life situations and delivered with conversation-best technology. So if you're planning a trip abroad, I think that's always a great reason to start learning a new language. It's also just a great hobby and thing to challenge your mind in as you get older. You know, it's hard to stimulate the brain. And Babbel's so fun. It's so easy. You know, you can ask how to order food, ask for directions, speak to merchants without having to consult a language app while on vacation. So studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove that Babbel is just better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. With over 10 million sub- subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. And here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. To get you started right now and get 55% off your Babbel subscription, only for our listeners, do so at babbel.com slash toast. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash toast, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash 
toast, babbel.com slash T-O-A-S-T. Rules and restrictions may apply. Thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring today's episode. Thank you, Babbel, for being the best named company in the world. That too. You Like the perfect name for a company doesn't exist. Babbel. Babbel. Hold my beer. <laughs> okay, our next story is some really great news for television. Ken Jong of Mass Singer, The Hangover, Community, Crazy Rich Asians, etc., is shooting a talk show pilot with Debmar Mercury. So daytime may be getting a new face. Ken Jong has enter- entered the chat. TV insiders are buzzing that Debmar Mercury, the production company behind Sherry and Nick Cannon's failed talk show, are working on a new project. Shade. With- That's page six for you, okay? I didn't even realize that he had a failed talk show. Did you? Never heard of it. I think that we. it's coming back to me. I didn't realize that he had one. I didn't realize that it ended. Do you know what I mean? It's not even remotely in my brain. I never heard of it. Okay. Well, they're working on a new project with Nick Cannon's masked singer castmate, Dr. Ken Jong. We hear Jong and Debmar have been trying to keep the nationally syndicated project under wraps, but they are spending the weekend shooting the pilot in the same studio as Wendy Williams' former set, which now mm. be- belongs to the Sherry Shepard show. They're mum about it, but they're excited about putting him on daytime, even though they weren't able to have success with Nick Cannon. He just so happens to be the host of Masked Singer, and Jong is one of the panelists on the show. He will be an executive producer of his new talk show. Sources say everyone's been whispering about it, despite it being very top secret. Okay, daytime is so weird because it's such a dying breed, Mm -hmm. but they don't stop. Like, they can't be stopped. And every now and then, they get something. Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. And so... Drew Barrymore, too. I think that was actually like a really unexpected thing that her show became as popular as it was because it just seemed like another woman with a show. Yeah. Um, And then they they really haven't stopped. Karamo, Jennifer Hudson. I feel like Jennifer Hudson's is like pretty popular. Yeah, they've done it like over 100 episodes. And yeah, she kind of flies under the radar, like just a consistently like good audience, good like uh, ratings. Yeah, that's what you want. Like, you never want to be the most, like, buzzed about. Like, that's what daytime is supposed to be, just, like, consistency. It's not the flashiest. It's not headlines every single day. Like, you're just a part of people's lives. Yeah, and so I feel like she does a good job. Ken Jong is, like, not an obvious choice, but when you really sit down and think about it, like, he's kind of America's sweetheart. You like, know, he's so beloved. He's one of my favorite actors. Everything that he's in, like, he makes – he's the reason why I'm laughing. We're rewatching yeah. Community and, like – Ben Chang, there's just no one funnier. Claudia, you... I didn't realize he was in community. Claudia, you have to watch Senor okay. Chang. He teaches Spanish okay. class. Oh, that's funny. No, it's so funny. Um, So I'm really just in my Ken Jong era right now, which I always am because also like Leslie Chow. He's the reason why the Hangover movies are funny. He's the reason why the Hangover movies are funny. It's about time somebody started saying that. So I think that he is a great pick for this. I really do. I really feel like Daytime does a really good job of... Even if it doesn't work out, like finding people who are just like so beloved, who are more than just actors, but not like the biggest, baddest personality, because you, then you need to talk to other people. So, yeah, like, I also like, feel like seriously, like Kelly Clarkson, like that's exactly who she is. Yeah, I also feel like, and I don't watch it, so I'm not familiar, but like The Mass Singer, it really is huge and it's so widespread. Like people all over America, like just tune in every week. And he's like one of the stars. He's really funny. And also he has a background in comedy, which I feel like when when you do stand up and like you're a writer, you really can do anything. Also, he's a doctor, um, which yes. I think will add just a level of expertise to his show and just a different sort of flair. And even maybe he like takes over for Dr. Phil, Dr. Jong. No, not Dr. Phil, because Dr. Phil's like a PhD doctor. Like oh, yeah. Dr. Drew, I mean, Dr. Oz. He's like a medical doctor. True, true. So, yeah, no, and, and Dr. Drew, I feel like all those shows went off the air, like those medical talk shows. We need a doctor. Yeah, but there's we don't need a doctor TV show. So the fact that he's like a comedian, a host, and a doctor, he brings all different facets to life. I actually think the more we talk this through, it's an inspired choice. Someone and it's call so the not doctor. Obvious. Someone call the doctor. The doctor is in. The doctor is in. And when you are a daytime talk show host, like it's not enough to just be an actor, I think, because like it's just you need to be a little more well-rounded. Like Kelly, I mean, she does everything under the sun. She sings, she does her karaoke. Like maybe Ken Jung finds a way to bring in his comedy, his medical um, expertise. Background. And it brings a little something extra to the show, don't you think? I do. <laughs> also, speaking of Kelly, like she kind of lit the internet ablaze in the last couple of days. Because she's a snatchler? Because she got a new stylist. Like, oh. I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, she like, she looks amazing. She's wearing like cute clothes. 
And I don't think people realized until she started dressing well that she's been dressing fucking weird for like the last couple of years. Like very um, just like frocks and patterns and, you know, she kimonos. loves a frock. You're right about that. She loves that. a frock. And it's like she's this gorgeous young woman. Like, she, Kelly, if you got it, flaunt it. So people have noticed a visible shift because she was on The Tonight Show looking amazing in this black jumpsuit. And it's like, wow, why has Kelly Clarkson never dressed like this before? And people are, you know, le- are led to believe now that she has a new stylist. I love a, a, a new stylist. And she's look, she looks great. She really does. She's like, that's my queen right there. Yeah, it always comes back to Kelly. Like, if you're in Hollywood, like, Kelly, like, sets the bar. I would always just be, like, comparing myself to Kelly. It's true. Queen. Queen. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Yes. I'm just, like, was looking for another story quickly, but this is an important one, so I'll just stick with it. Um, A new Israeli documentary is going to tell the story of the massacre at the Supernova Music Festival. So an Israeli documentary team is already working on putting together a documentary about what happened on October 7th at the Supernova Music Festival in Kibbutz Re'im. Um, Yariv Moser, director of The Devil's Confession, The Lost Eichmann Tapes, and Ben Gurion Epilogue will direct the film using exclusive material from participants and key people at the festival. The filmmaker said they aim to present an in-depth look at the festival before, during, and after the horrific event and will include interviews with investigators, soldiers, and journalists shocked by the carnage they have witnessed as well as unseen footage gathered from the festival goers. Damn, that's rough. Um, I have to say, I watched this segment this morning and just major shout out to Anderson Cooper who like will not let this go. Like he will not stop telling stories about what happened at that music festival and I saw I watched this segment he did today I think last night or the night before they did an hour like a a pre-recorded hour special on just the music festival Mm -hmm. because so many more things are coming out but in a teaser on his regular show um he went down to one of the uh bomb shelters so when 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 people at the festival started realizing like something was going sideways, they all crammed into a bomb shelter. And this, rockets, uh, it happened. Rockets were being fired, so sirens went off, so that you run to a shelter. Right, and there's a million shelters like on every block in Israel because this is something that they're used to. Um, so everybody ran to a shelter, and I think these terrorists knew that was going to happen, so they waited outside, and there was like filled to the brim, like packed in like sardines into these bomb shelters, and they threw grenades in yeah. and blew people up, and so. Uh, Anderson Cooper and a cameraman went to visit one of the bomb shelters. Like, the the remains had been cleared up. And his cameraman, like, he, it was all on camera. His cameraman is vomiting profusely out. Like, he, like the smell in there. Um, he's doing a really, really amazing job, like, telling stories of – there's so many stories to tell, and it's, like, hard to get national news coverage for everyone. And I feel like he's literally, like, doing his best every single night, like, speaking with new people. Um, so shout out to him. Yeah. And – Like, this is a story that is just so horrible and really does need to be told, but it's going to be incredibly painful to watch because it's so graphic. Yeah, but I think it's important. I feel like a lot of the people who might not be paying the closest attention to what's happened don't really know exactly, like, how horrible it was. And for our generation like we consume a lot of documentaries it's how people feel they become experts on a certain matter it's true it's how people learn I think it's the right for I think that's the format that might grab people's attention if it hasn't already you know if they've just sort of like been scrolling Scrolling. past what they see or maybe they're, they're just not being served it so I think that putting it into a documentary is a and you can pack a lot of information and testimonies and photo and video evidence into it like I think it will begin to tell a part a big part of the story about what happened and I think that's really important and the fact that they're turning it around so quickly like people need to know about it now because like right it it has a a, you know a huge amount to do with the response that they're going to see from Israel and you need to understand what happened in order to have an opinion on the response no and I feel like with documentaries it's a lot of times about things that happened in the past and you're like well where was the outrage and if the documentary had come out at that time and galvanized the people then maybe um, it would have ended differently. And so now for the documentary to be coming out, you know, in the time that it actually did happen, it's not telling the story about something that happened 20 years ago. It's impactful. Um, So I think this is good. Yeah, I think it's um, necessary. And I hope people watch and I hope it's like available everywhere, not somewhere you have to go watch on like. No, and not just available in Israel. Oh, yeah. No, but like, you know, Netflix, Hulu, not like. some random Amazon free V. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, people need to know what happened. So 
<sighs> yeah. Sorry to go back that's there. Okay. But um, no, that's I, th- good to I know. thought it was interesting. And also just like the way that, talk- and we've been seeing this even with things that happen in popular culture, you know, Anna yeah. Delvey or the GameStop stuff where the documentary, the turnaround time is getting shorter and shorter. It is. But I think with this, like it, it has a very important purpose mm-hmm. and that's to like make people see sooner rather than later. Yeah, I agree. So those are the Fast Five stories. A lot of content news. Actually, four out of five is content news. It's good to be back, Jax. You it know, really it, is. It feels like the writers are, have gotten back to work is what oh, it is. Oh, that is why there's so much writing news. Except for, um, what was it? A past, like Hunger Games stuff. But yeah, the yeah. writers are back writing. The actors are not back nope. acting. And no update even. Like, it's not good. So would SNL not have come back this week if the writers... Did it come yeah. back this week because the writers... Um, I don't know when they were planning to, but they if their release date was, I mean, their premiere date was anything in the past couple of weeks, then no. Um, but who was the host? I don't know. I only oh, know Pete the, Davidson. But he was the is, host? Yeah, he was the host. Oh, maybe because they couldn't get someone in time. Right. Or they couldn't get someone who has a project out because that goes against SAG. Like you can't be promoting stuff. And most people do SNL when they're, you know, on a movie promo. Yeah, but what if you have like a, uh, it could have been a podcaster. Yeah, no, I I wonder, I'm sure it's SAG compliant, but like why why Pete was allowed. Was he promoting a movie? No. Maybe they just like, the writer's strike ended, they knew they could do a show in, in a week and a half and they couldn't get someone to like do it and someone who like wouldn't be crossing SAG. Yeah, no, 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 I know, but I just might, I'm curious how Pete doing it isn't crossing SAG. Perhaps it's because he wasn't promoting anything. And perhaps it's because he's also technically a writer. Yeah, he's a writer. Right. Um, And then Ice Spice was a performer. And then they had mm-hmm. Travis and Taylor. So they turned out a show. No, they did. And I feel like it was a good premiere. Everyone was talking about it. Yes, but also because of Travis and Taylor. They kind of like saved their little show. Uh, they saved their little Instagram show. <laughs> <laughs> um. So those are the stories. It's. Nice to feel again, you know? Yes. You have a big day ahead of you, so I'm going to let you go and do that. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast the Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, Tuesday, Republic Radio, I had a great cast box. All the places where we listen to podcasts find us. The Toast the Five Star View, better, beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Love ya. Bye. Love ya. Bye.